Um, I'm going to just pray at this time and give God thanks uh, for the uh, times and offering that you have been given and those that will be given later on. Our God and our Father, we thank you for the privilege that we have to give towards your work. I thank you for every person that has been loyal and faithful in their giving. Thank you for those that have made huge sacrificial giving towards your work. Lord, please remember them. As you remembered Cornelius, the prayers that he prayed and his arms is giving uh, towards the Jewish people. Lord, that, that you remembered him. And Lord, a memorial came up before you. May, oh God, a memorial of your people arise before your very throne of grace. And that you will remember them whatsoever their needs are. Lord, you are able to do far exceedingly abundantly above all that we're able to even ask or think according to the power that's working within us. So, Father, bless, increase, multiply your people. Bless the works of their hands, those who are putting their hands towards business. Lord, it is you who give us the power to get wealth, to establish your covenant. Remember your children, Lord. He, David says, I was young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor he seed begging bread. And we give you all the glory and we give you all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we have been uh, on a journey, and we're still on that journey looking at the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And uh, as you are hearing the word of God each week concerning the gifts of the Holy Spirit, I really want you to exercise your faith and believe that um, the Lord wants to pour out his spirit upon your life and for you to move in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But let me encourage you, church, as I said before, one of the ways how the gifts of the Holy Spirit begin to operate is through opportunity that God puts before us. If you are witnessing and you are uh, speaking to people about Jesus, expect a word of knowledge and information that God will give to you to do the past or the present about that person. Um, God can reveal to you the secrets of mortal men uh, so that they will be in awe not of you, if they're in awe of you, you make sure you point to God because it's his Holy Spirit that is operating through you and it's not because you're the next best thing since sliced bread. It is the Spirit of God that is operating uh, through the word of knowledge or through the uh, gifts of healings as we spoke about as well. All of these are in the archives and, um, and the Spirit of God uh, would, would manifest. You must expect Believe God. And if he puts an opportunity before you, you're speaking to someone, you know, and they've been saying, you know, this problem, you know, has happened with me. He says, you know, just step out in faith. Would you like me to pray for you? And don't worry about, because this is the, the common thing that the enemy uh, puts into people's head. What if nothing happens? Uh, well, you know, uh, it, it's not up to you. It's, it's, just, it's for you to believe and to pray. God is the healer. God is the one that does it all, okay? So don't be put off by that voice. What happens if nothing happens? You can look stupid. You can look and you become fearful and you never step out because you're, you, you're, fear, you're fearful that nothing's going to happen. It's not down to you for something to happen. You just obey scripture and leave the rest to God. Amen? Hallelujah. And so 1 Corinthians 
chapter 12, and we have come to the 10th verse, the working of miracles. Now, notice what the Bible calls this, the working. Have you ever wonder why the Bible says uh, the working of miracles? I thought I had my other one down there. Thank you. The working of miracles. So let's look at this, shall we? Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 10. Thank you. To another, is it? We've done healing last week. To another, the working of miracles. Wow. I guess when we see the, read the Bible, I am, yes, the Bible is a history book, but don't stop there. Oh, it's wonderful that God did all these wonderful, amazing things. Wow, 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 wow. And sadly, so many Christians just stop there. They stop at uh, what God did in the past, thinking that um, there was only a day of miracle or a time of miracles and not a God of miracles. I hope you got that. People see God or, or, or see an event in the Bible and they think, okay, there was a time, an event, uh, and, and uh, that's past. And they don't see, oh, a God of miracles. That's, we're going to see that in the present tense. A God of miracles that is able to uh, uh, perform, to manifest a miracle through mere mortal human beings like yourself. Okay, and so, um, so I'm going to read some um, quotes from uh, three major uh, uh, men of God that have gone home to be with the Lord. How uh, they see uh, 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 miracles according uh, to, to the Bible. So uh, this first quote is from the uh, late Kenneth Agan. A miracle is a supernatural intervention in the ordinary course of nature temporarily suspension of the accustomed order an interruption of the system of nature as we know it operated by the power of the holy spirit just give me some definition some great men of God that God used in miracles and using great uh, era to teach his word who are now with the Lord. Lester Sumrall, uh, this man was just extraordinary um, in, his, in his faith, very rough uh, person. And uh, I remember when he came over uh, to Britain and I thought, he's in Britain, we've got to see this guy. And we went, I forgot how far we went uh, just to see this man of God and uh, and uh, he prayed uh, for people at the end, and he would just he would just come up and he says, "Be blessed." And I said, you know, remember he took my head and he went, "Be blessed, Hallelujah!" But praise the Lord. So this man was uh, 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 prayed for by uh, um, uh, Smith Widdlesworth. If anyone knows the Apostle of Faith, lived in the 1930s and. A tremendous man of God, Smith Widdlesworth, and Lester Summerall, um, uh, amazing man when he went to the Philippines, um, and uh, he was in his hotel room, and he was on his bed. Demons came and moved his bed. He just says, "Put it back," and they put it back. Yes, wow, that's a man of faith. Whoa, demons come and move the bed. Tell him to put it back. In the name of Jesus. And so this is a quote from uh, the late Lester Summers. In the gift of the working of miracles, God is entrusting us with a strength, with an energy that we do not normally have. It is the power of the Spirit of God surging through us through our hands and our feet and our minds, causing us to do or to uh, 
to be something that is not normal or natural to our behavior. Wow. The gifts of, uh, and ministries of the Holy Spirit. You find that in his book, The Gifts and Ministry of the Holy Spirit, page 105. So that's Lester Sunroof. Now, Howard Carter, who was before all of these uh, 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 men of God, and his teaching on uh, the uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit, he wrote this about the working of miracles. We might say that it is the supernatural demonstration of the power of God by which the laws of nature are altered suspended or control and uh, that's in his book answers on spiritual uh, gifts so it is important is an important note that spiritual gifts are not earned put that down there uh, spiritual gifts are not earned it is the gift from God you cannot earn a gift. As we mentioned previously in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1, um, pursue love. Make sure that's number one. Uh, people are operating the gifts of the Holy Spirit and have no love. They, know to, they don't know how to treat people in the church. don't know how to treat people outside of the church. But they're speaking in tongues. Just clashing symbols. That's all it is. Okay. So it says, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. So we're told to desire. What's happening in the church today? Do we actually desire spiritual gifts or we are in unbelief to think that that time is over or it's only relegated for an elite group of Christians or Christian leaders? And I'm saying to each and every one of you sitting there in the pew watching me online behind that screen that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are for you. This last move of God that we will experience is going to come from the pews. There will be no superstars. That is over sadly what has happened that god doesn't raise up superstars is that these men and these women make themselves celebrities of some kind in the body of christ superstars they make themselves an elite uh, in such a way that uh, you can never reach their uh, 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 level they make themselves out that way and that is a lie and um, uh, uh, those days are over. And God is raising up ordinary uh, men and women and boys and girls. You're going to see young children move in signs and wonders and miracles. You're going to see children, children laying hands on the sick. And the sick is going to recover. People will come out of wheelchairs. Deaf ears would open. Blind eyes would open. Diseases will vanish through the young and the old. There is no age uh, 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 preferences with God. There is no discrimination of age or sex with God. Only male and female, by the way. Male and female, okay, let's not get too carried away and stuff like that. All right, only two genders, okay. So uh, there is no discrimination, whether you're rich or poor. Um, you don't have to uh, have been in the church for many years or your parents to be in the church for God to say, okay, I'm going to consider this person because I can see that their father, their grandfather and so forth was in the church. No, there is no discrimination with God. There's only discrimination when it comes to faith. Do you believe or not believe as a Christian that God wants to operate the gifts? Jesus is the giver of the gifts. The Holy Spirit uh, manifests the gift through believers, not unbelievers. It's for believe. Are you a believer, church? 
Right, so get ready for what God wants to do in your life. I'm expecting, even as I'm teaching, that the spirit of angels, angels of God, the Bible says, are ministering spirits to minister to the heirs of salvation, are going throughout the aisles and imparting things into people as your faith arise. So, what is the working? The Bible calls it the working of miracles. The working of miracles is a supernatural occurrence that goes beyond our human scope of comprehension. In other words, when someone is operating in the spiritual gifts of the working of miracles, they have the ability through the power of the Holy Spirit to bend the natural laws of this world. Those who operate in the gifts pull down the miracles from heaven. So they manifest on earth. And um, we're going to get into some grassroots of differentiating uh, and what how that works the working of miracles but I just want to say there is a difference uh, in the era of faith and the working of miracles um, also healing healing could take place over a period of time the Bible says in that same self hour that person was fully healed so you can see healing miracles are instantaneous it's an instantaneous interruption overriding the laws of nature to bring about something that a human being cannot do oh that's a good one yeah so so the spirit of god brings something about that you cannot do a, a, a miracle but the working of it, it has a different dynamics uh, uh, to it Okay, and so, um, so where do we see this operating, the, the, the working? Because when you think of work, you think of energy, you think of someone going out of the way to do something, and then a miracle happens. So we can uh, 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 look at the time when Jesus placed, he spat on the ground, a blind man came to him and he spat on the ground and he placed um, mud on the person's eyes. And then he gave the blind man an instruction. Go and wash in the pool of Siloam. So that man had to carry out an instruction. He had to do some work. And then the miracle happened. The person with the withered hand, he was told, stretch it forth. And he could have said, but I can't stretch it forth. My hand's been like this from birth. So he had to do some work. So you can see where the gifts of the Holy Spirit complements. Because the man had to have the faith now, right? And then... All of a sudden, as he obeyed the instruction, the working of miracles took place. And so, um, so you can see the person has to do something. You can see, uh, we go back to the gate, beautiful a man that had been there, even in the time of Jesus. You ever wondered why Jesus didn't heal him? He was there for 40 years. Every single day, the Bible says he was at the temple praying. So Jesus would have seen him. And Jesus did not heal him because he was leaving that for his disciples. So Peter and John was going to prayer as they normally do at three o'clock. And uh, the man was there. And all of a sudden they looked at the man and said, listen, silver and gold we don't have any, but such as we have in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now, there had to be some work there because Peter says, Rise up and walk. And you know, he, he, he did not rise up and walk. Read it. Peter took him by the hand and 
pulled him up. Imagine 40 years being lame. You know, he's going to need some help because psychologically, mentally, hey, I can't walk. And he didn't feel anything. Sometimes miracles do accompany things, uh, spiritual uh, things happen, and you feel something. But obviously, in this situation, nothing happened. It just was Peter's faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that God is able to make this crippled person that everybody knew to walk. And the Bible says he took the man by the hand and he pulled him up. Read that. He took him by the hand. The work and the miracle happened. He was healed instantaneously. So this wasn't a healing. This was a miracle. The working of miracle took place. So there's some times that um, when you pray for someone, because they've had that condition for so long, let's say it's a back problem. They got pain in their back. Every time they will bend their back in a certain way, they're always a pain. Now you've prayed and something in your spirit witnesses, witness that the person has been healed. But the person is just standing there. And you have to tell the person, listen, faith is an act. Do what you could not do before. If you could not bend, bend. And you can see fear on the person. Because the person knows for all these years, every time he or she has bend, there was pain there. So they, they don't want, they're reluctant to bend. But you are encouraged. Encouraging them because something in your spirit, you know that, you know that, you know that the person's back is healed. And so as, and they begin to do it slowly. It's just in my mind. And they go all the way down, which they couldn't do before. And they come up and they go down. And you say, go up, go down again. Come up, go down again. Do you feel any pain? No, I'm healed. Hallelujah. You got an arm. You could not lift it above a certain height because of arthritis, room, whatever. Lift that hand in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. And a miracle just takes place. Instantaneous healing. Some people don't experience that straight away. They continue to trust God and then probably they heal. They wake up the next morning. That's a healing over a period of time, uh, that person is healed. But the working of miracles, you're encouraging, you're giving an instruction uh, uh, for the person. And some things may come across your own mind concerning the scriptures now where you see where something uh, took place, where a person had to do something. And then the person was instantaneously healed. And so that is, again, faith on the, per on the part of the person. And sometimes the other person needs faith. But when it comes to someone who's dead, they're dead. You have to know that God has spoken to you, right? <laughs> wow. You have to know that God has spoken to you for someone who has passed away for a number of hours or days. And the Lord now clearly tells you, it's not your emotions. You will know that this dead person is going to be raised, or your faith is just out of place in God, that you just know that you know that you know. But you, you can see now there's more than one operation of the gifts being demonstrated through your life, faith, and you're believing God for a miracle that is able to do. So that is just a straight miracle in itself, that unless God tells you, like, thank you, Lord. Was it, was it Elijah that, that stood over the dead boy? I mean, it was kind of like where God gives you a, a prophetic instruction and it just goes beyond reasoning. But you see the demonstration, the manifestation of that, where Elijah spread out himself over the boy. And what the, was it mouth? Was it blowing his mouth, something like that? And the boy whew, came back to life again, the working of miracles that he not just, it could have, God could have had Elijah to speak, but he didn't. He had to follow an instruction, or he, led, he was led to actually do that. Um, 
another era, thank you, Lord, of working of miracles. Elisha and, and, and Naaman. Is Naaman Haman? Haman. Naaman. Okay, uh, a, a, a captain of the Syrian army uh, came to him, was recommended by a Jewish servant girl um, uh, to check out uh, this man of God uh, because he's a prophet of God. And, and so he came to um, uh, uh, Elisha's house, um, an important figure. And, uh, I, I, you know, you, you see little things and you're thinking, wow, that's something else because Elisha didn't even come out to see this person, to see this important person. He just sent a message. Go and tell him to go and dip in Jordan. Now, if anyone been to Israel? Listen, a Christian, at least, at least one time in your life, uh, you, you must go to Israel, otherwise you're not going to heaven. No, no, that, that's not true, okay? <laughs> you know, if you can, it will it, it be, it be wonderful. Uh, I tell you something, you, you feel that you have returned home. Um, it's a real unusual feeling when you go. It's awesome. So the River Jordan, it's dirty. It was dirty back then because you, you heard that from the, uh, from the, the Syrian captain. Um, said, you know... Why didn't he tell me to go to this river? But he told me to go to that river. Obviously, a very important man full of pride. God knows how to humble the proud. And, and he said, well, if it was this river, if it was that river, I would have gone. And the servant goes, but you know, if he said this, you would have gone. He said, you know, to go to the river Jordan. It is dirty. It is mucky. But he obeyed in the end. See, there's a work in there, but he was told what? To dip once, twice, seven times. I mean, that he could have been put off after three times, nothing, four times. And you can, you can imagine the army that he came with, his, his band of men uh, uh, that he came with, thinking, looking at each other, thinking, you know, and the seventh time when he dipped, he came up completely clean. Wow. So that was a, a working of miracles. A miracle that took place. Um, and uh, amazing. So that is a prophetic instruction. I just want to throw this in for free, okay, that um, what is sometimes dangerous that some men do they receive a prophetic instruction but and they make it a doctrine so they think oh, that god's going to work that time all the time no that is an instruction for that time and what we're seeing today in a lot of these uh, uh so-called men of god they are uh, doing things in the old testament get sought because elijah got sought and they're using that and the occult use salt a lot. And, um, but because people don't read their Bible, go to a church where they can be taught the word of God, they are falling for some of these counterfeits. And uh, they have, end up being initiated. And that's why they're just blinded and being controlled in that shrine, what they call a church of theirs. So... Um, so these are uh, uh, examples of uh, the working of miracles. And, and um, so I want us to be aware of that. And, uh, you know, you read the gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then you can now see where there's a healing. You can now see where there's a miracle. Or you can see where the gift of faith was in operation. Okay. Um, Paul was preaching for a long time, for three hours. So don't complain. When I preach, okay, <laughs> he was preaching for three hours, and someone on the top uh, 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 of the uh, balcony uh, uh, fell asleep. So Paul sent him to sleep for his preaching. <laughs> you know, and so the guy, the guy fell and landed. He, I mean, he was dead, and everybody knew he was dead. And and you notice how Paul's reaction? No problem. He just went over there. What did he do? He just raised him. That was an instantaneous miracle. Uh, that was not the working of miracles. That was just, was just a miracle that, that took place. Because he, he didn't do anything strange. He just raised the man up. 
and uh, an instantaneous. So you can see uh, the difference with an instantaneous miracle, and you can see uh, uh, the working of miracles that sometimes God speaks to the man or the woman of God that is actually carrying out uh, uh, that ministry, or, or the person is given an instruction um, to go and do this to whatever, and then the miracle happens. I want to say something here concerning healing. You will find out that a lot of healings are blocked from Christians' lives because of unforgiveness. And when they forgive, all of a sudden the healing takes place. The breakthrough takes place. I know I'm not going in that area, but I want to throw this in uh, because a lot of Christian miracles or breakthroughs are hindered because something happened in the past that they will not let go. They say they have forgiven, but in their conversation or when that person uh, comes to mind, then all this ill negative feeling comes up you have not properly forgiven and um, one must be blatantly honest with themselves lord i thought i had forgiven wow the lord says the reason why people think they have forgiven but they have not forgiven because they have said it with their lips oh i forgive that person and because they have said it with their lips automatic no it it follows through according to matthew chapter 5 pray for those who despitefully use you i will say have you prayed for the person that has done you wrong? Now all this emotion comes up. All this in negative anger. Why should I? I did it. And then you realize, oh my gosh, all this junk is there. Because all these bad negative feelings are rising up. Listen, that's okay. That's okay take it to the cross you know the song take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there don't take it up if it's still there the next day go back Lord help me I give you I give you this hate that I've been feeling for this person this bitterness this resentment this anger Lord it's don't deny it okay it's uh, we're humans it's naturally if you if someone done something wrong you're going to hurt and something is going to arise uh, that, that that's okay you're a human being although you are blood wash you speak in tongues but you are still a hu you still have your human nature your human nature wasn't taken away your human nature is fallen wow why am i going this way anyway your human nature is a fallen nature Okay, so go to the cross. In other words, go to Jesus who took that, who bore that in his body on the cross. And you'll find the Holy Spirit will do a work of grace where the, the sting of that pain of what was done is gone. It's completely, completely gone. And you can literally pray, Lord, I bless this person. Oh, my Lord. Is anybody receiving anything? Okay, we don't want to walk around with these open doors uh, in our lives. Listen, Jesus loves you so much that he loves you. That he doesn't want you to stay the same way you are. And so, please, uh, and this is something that the Lord has put in my heart to constantly come up with and he said it will come up in your ministry, in your messages at times um, unforgiveness and because and, and, it said it's blocking it's like a spanner in the works it, it's clogging it, it's stopping God from moving because if you can't forgive God cannot forgive 
Matthew chapter 6, the Lord's Prayer, at the end of that. Okay, so please work on that. Don't ignore it. Don't just shove it under the carpet. Please ask the Lord to help you. Lord, I need help. In and of my own ability, I can't let this go. It, it hurts so much when I think what they did, what they said. God understands and he knows. Amen. So you can come to the Lord and, and he can identify with you. Why? Because it was done to him. And worse. And worse was done to our Lord. And so there is grace to flow. Oh, praise you, Lord. Hey, the working of miracles is used, is used to display God's power and magnificent. Wow, when that Red Sea opened, whoa, ho, ho. those Egyptians, I mean, what could you say? What could you say as a child of God seeing that happen? I mean, we could just only, well, they've made wonderful movies, okay, of that, but to actually be there and to see the laws of nature being broken a suspension of what is normal, of what is natural, just happening before your eyes. I believe, church, very much that there are certain miracles that people are going to see in these last days that people will faint because their mind will not be able to process what they're seeing. I'm giving this illustration that there are people with no arms or legs amputated that will grow out before your very eyes. The mind cannot process that. Arms growing, people who are twisted and crippled, bones snapping and crackling as they straighten up. And you're seeing that with your eyes. And you're pointing to Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the one who's doing this. Jesus is who he says he is. Jesus is God. People will run to Jesus. That would dispel all the arguments you have with Muslims concerning if Jesus is God. When a miracle happens, it will silence them. When I used to go to Brixton Mosque to speak to the Iman there um, many years ago and uh, I was up there in the room with the Iman and he had his some Muslims there and, and I was showing him from the scripture that Jesus Christ is God and uh, he says no, um, Jesus is only a prophet and we were going backwards and forward and you know his uh, disciples, he would, they were laughing at me and, and so forth and I says okay let's stop. I says, I'm willing to prove to you that Jesus is God. I says, now go through the mosque. Find someone who has a physical sickness. Uh, if he's got an earring aid or she's got an earring aid on or they're deaf or, or they, uh, they have a crutches or whatever. I says, bring them here now. I says, you will pray in the name of Allah. And I will pray in the name of Jesus Christ. And we will see whose God is God. When I said that, these guys just stopped laughing. The imam uh, that was there, the cleric, was, no, 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 no. no. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, I said, you know, I'm saying from the scriptures and from what I know that Jesus Christ is God. You are saying that he is just a prophet. Find someone now. I says, go through the mosque and find someone now. And I will pray and you will pray. And because he didn't know what to do and he was losing face in front of his disciples, he says, well, do you know we can kill you? Because I, I, was, I was in the mosque, I was upstairs. And he says, we can kill you for what you're saying. So I says, well, I know where I'm going when I die. Do you? I says, I know where I'm going when I die. If you kill me, you kill me. I know where I'm going. So he, he didn't expect that. And that shocked him. And, and then from then I began to preach to him the gospel. And then I just walked out. 
and, and, and so forth. Um, God is going to display his amazing grace so that people will have the opportunity to know that Jesus Christ is who he says he is. All these arguments that we, uh, that takes place trying to prove, and, and there's nothing wrong in that um, because a lot of people have come to Christ uh, by showing from the scriptures that Jesus Christ is Lord. But Jesus says, if you don't believe me for the words that I speak, believe for the works that I do. And we know there are people who will see the works and not believe. It happened even in Jesus' day. Uh, uh, but the signs are, miracles are a sign to show that Jesus Christ is who he says he is. And we are going to see that. It's going to manifest in Tabernacle Christian Center. It's going to manifest in the end time church that God has covered up. Many of them are undercover. And God is going to do this. He's going to uncover these churches who are not pushing themselves forward to be seen, to be popular, to make a name for themselves. But they've been taken through the fire again and again and again. And they're holding on to their faith. They're like Job. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Hallelujah. And that's the stance that, that we must adopt and have in our lives. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I will wait until my change comes. Amen. And 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 Jesus will do it, church. Amen. Hallelujah. Regardless of what is going on, uh, God has a date on his calendar. Hallelujah. That uh, he's going to come through for you. Miracles. A miracle is a supernatural act on a natural plane. And um, we had some examples here. Uh, Moses par part in the Red Sea. Listen, as a believer, you have access to the spiritual gifts of the working of miracles. As a believer, that is a criteria for the gifts of the Holy Spirit to be operative through your life. It's the Holy Spirit that does it. Jesus is the giver and distributor of gifts and callings. The Holy Spirit in you who resides in every blood-bought, redeemed Christian. He is in you. And he, the Holy Spirit, who is a person, who is God, wants to demonstrate the power of God through you. Paul puts it this way. When I came to you, I did not come with enticing words of men's wisdom. Another translation said, with eloquence of speech. But I came in the demonstration of the spirit and what? Power. That just shuts down all the arguments. Miracles are going to break forth in your life. God will use ordinary you. Ordinary you. Regardless of how inadequate you feel about yourself. God wants to use you in these last days to demonstrate his glory and power through your life. Your hands. 
Mark 16, your hands being laid on someone and they will fill the presence of God. Some will probably fall depending on how the spirit of God is administrated through your life. Some people, they fall through other people. Other people, they don't have that demonstration or that manifestation, but the miracle still takes place. So however God does it, um, that's why I said to people, listen, if you, when you come to the uh, uh, altar to be prayed for, if you don't fall, it doesn't mean that anything has, nothing has happened with you. It's all by faith. You're not going to be pushed over. I'm not going to push you over. Why do men of God and women of God push people over? Because it makes them look good. That's what the Lord told me. And it's true. Because when someone falls down and they're being pushed down, you see those pre- I don't want you to go down. Then, aren't I powerful? It makes me look good because you're falling. But these people are getting up and nothing has happened to them. And so everything that happens is by faith. So when you come to be prayed for, it's by faith. You just believe and you go rejoicing. If you fall over, you fall over. Some people just fall over because they come from a church and, and that's what they're expected to do. Okay, uh, we're not going to push you in your foot. We're just going to touch you on your head if we, if, we, if we happen to pray for you. We're going to place our hands on your head uh, so you're not going to be pushed forward and end up breaking your neck or whatever because you, you are resisting. And, uh, you know, I've been a victim of those ministers. You know, you, they're pushing you. And uh, you thought, okay, let me just go over it. So, so please, the man. <laughs> Goodness me. What is wrong with these people? ministers uh it's it's all about them looking good and they think there's no power if he doesn't if you don't fall and yet the bible says we receive by faith without faith it's impossible to please him so it's faith your faith in not in me but in god but god uses his servants and and and, and so forth so um um just to help you in that area that uh, if you do happen to go to a church and they call you out and they're pushing you don't have to fall he said, excuse me, please, sir. God bless you. Or if you just want to be polite and just, okay, let me just fall over and then get up again and go to the back. <laughs> uh, but I, I yeah, uh, these people uh, are damaging people and, uh, and so forth. So the same spirit who hovered over the waters during creation, the Bible says in the spirit, Brood hovered over the oceans, hovered over the earth, waiting for God to speak, Jesus to speak, and then the Holy Spirit manifested. Okay? And so, so um, who released miracles in the early church and who raised Jesus from the dead is at work in the Christian church. The same Holy Spirit who hovered over the waters, over the creation, waiting when God says, now let there be light, and the Holy Spirit manifests the light. That same Holy Spirit is in the church today, looking for people who would have the audacity to believe. As I mentioned some time ago, you can grow in your faith. You can actually grow. There's a gift of faith and there's growing in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. As you read the Bible, as you spend time in, with him, you're going to have certain experiences. So you are confident then to step out. And, you know, God, uh, at times, you know that you're nervous, but you're believing God because you want to help people. Listen, the gift of the Spirit is to help people. The Bible says, first of all, it's to edify the church, which means to build up the church. And so you have a desire, Lord, I want to help people. I don't want to look good. I don't want to point to myself, Lord. I want to glorify your name. In one of our um, purpose statement, um, we have on there, Tabernacle Christian Center exists to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Why we exist is to bring glory and honor to his name. All too often, sadly, because of outstanding talents and gifts, individuals end up taking God's glory 
for themselves. It has happened in every generation and it's still happening because of outstanding, extraordinary talents and gifts that God places on a mere mortal. They end up using that to be important and to look important. We must never do that. When God uses some of you in the area of miracles, when the word of knowledge starts to just spout from you like it's just normal, it's going to be awesome. But you must remember, it's the Holy Spirit operating through a mere mortal. And to give him the glory and the praise. Let's bow our heads, shall we? We're going to stop right there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Really sense your presence, Lord, in at this service again and through this word teaching. I thank you for every person under the sound of my voice. And I'm asking that you bless this word to their hearts. Holy Spirit, let's just remain in this reverent position at this time. We want the Holy Spirit operation. We want him to have liberty. Oh, thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, your people are here. You know everything about them uncertainties, needs. Seek first. Seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. Put God first in other words. Is he first you are asking for things. Is he first? My Lord. I see the story of Mary and Martha. Jesus came by one of his friends' house. And he dropped in with his disciples for lunch. Mary straight away went over at the feet of Jesus. Martha was attending to make lunch for the disciples and she was upset with Mary. Tell her, Lord, to come and help me. Jesus replied to Martha, you are anxious about many things. Mary has sought the right position. Are you anxious about many things? Have you sought the feet of Jesus? He's saying, put me first. You need to put me first. You're anxious like Martha. But you have not sought what is more important. Jesus did not rebuke Mary. Martha had, she had a point. But Jesus Christ is bringing over something for us to understand. I must be first. Is he first in your life? God is speaking to someone today. Make time for him. Make time for him, please. You said, well, I'm too busy. Well, you're just too busy. Thank you, Jesus.